the, the wonder of improvisation. There's a, a majestic mystery to it that baffles even the masters. There are no rules to improvisation, only your own. You see, that's the beauty of it. Anybody can improvise. And today, I'll introduce a simple method that will enable you to explore your creative energy within the realms of improvised music. But first... <laughs> hey, welcome to Not Right Music. This is lesson one of Deep Secrets to Improvising. I'm Marcus, here at my school in Tokyo, Japan. Well, a question often asked about improvising is simply, how do they do it, mm, right? Uh, how can musicians not only create music like that on the spot, but spontaneously do it so beautifully while making it all look so effortless? Well. It's important to understand that most improvisers do not simply go out there and just wing it. Mm. What they play is a result from practice and thinking about music. In fact, almost every improviser I know uses rehearsed ideas for improvising. Now, I'm not saying that they prepare note for note ahead of time and claim it's improvised. <laughs> of course not. What I'm talking about are the preparations needed in order to get out there and improvise. They use various tools from their arsenal that they build up from practice for improvising. Now, these tools or events, they can be anything like licks, techniques, noises, prepared sounds, samples, anything. They keep them in their mental bag ready to pull out when needed. Now, I call these ideas events. An event is something that is used for musical improvisation. Anything. And it can be long, it can be short, like a riff, or a wild sound effect. They're very flexible. It can be an idea like uh, using a tonal center with a mode, for example, E. Dorian. Or you can get creative and use an imaginative atmosphere as an event. Let's Think about that. Oh. Let's say I just finished talking with my friends and we were invited to play live background music at a Halloween party. Hmm. So knowing that this will be an improvised set, we wanted to come up with some themes or atmospheric events to help guide us through the improvisation. Now this being a Halloween party, it's pretty easy to come up with various atmospheric events. So for this example, let's say our atmospheric event is walking through a creepy haunted house at night. So we have to portray the idea of a creepy haunted house through music and sound should be pretty interesting.
armed with these events, I can keep them by my side, ready to use during our planned atmospheric improv session. Of course, I don't know what my friends are going to play, but that's the whole idea, right? I'm not planning the form of the improv session or the order to these events or anything like that. I'm preparing a basket of ingredients to take with me so I have something to work with. Creating your own rules or limitations is part of the creative process when using events in improvisation or composition. Some people who dedicate themselves to specific genres or music styles would limit what kinds of events they use. For example, a blues guitar player would limit there are events to things like uh, blues licks, such as or seventh chords, like or things like the 12 bar blues form or the feeling of depression, right? So it's up to you to create your own world using your events. So what you want to do now is come up with some of your own events. Make them radically different from each other. Try things you've never tried before. When you find something that you like, play around with it some more. Sculpt it. Log it. If possible, try these new events out during some kind of improv session with your friends. Or do it solo. Or even with some backing track that you found on YouTube or maybe one that you even made yourself. Now I understand that uh, this idea of collecting events or building an arsenal of ideas for soloing and improvising that it might seem obvious to some. Others maybe not, I don't know. But this lesson, it's an introduction. In later videos, we're going to be digging deeper in how to do all kinds of fun stuff with events. Plus, I hope that we can broaden our idea of what events can actually be and the different imaginative ways to utilize them. At first, the concept of events may seem a bit simplistic, but once you start applying it to your creative process, you should soon see how liberating it can be for your musical imagination. So see what you can do. It would be fun for you to share what various events you come up with in the comments. Never stop creating, I'm out.